Hi, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like down below, and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please give me a comment on what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another Kurtzkazat video on black holes. This one called The Black Hole Bomb and Black Hole Civilizations. Sounds cool. Black holes are the largest collections of pure violent energy in the universe. If you come too close, they'll devour you and add your energy to their collection. And so the energy is lost to us forever. Or is it? It turns out there's a universe cheat code. A way of powering civilizations until the... That's StarCraft? <laughs> That's awesome. ...death of everything or of constructing the largest bomb in the universe. But how? Didn't we learn that all energy is trapped forever in black holes, even light? This is true. Everything you think you know about the weirdest thing in the universe is about to get weirder for one simple reason. Black holes are spinning. It's true. Why black holes spin? When really, really massive stars die, their cores collapse under their own gravity into black holes. This means something very big becomes very, very tiny. Like the tiniest anything can be in this universe. But stars are rotating, and a fundamental property of our universe is that things that are spinning don't want to stop spinning. We call this angular momentum. And this angular momentum can't go away. A big thing that spins and becomes smaller spins faster. So, as the core of a star collapses, its momentum makes it spin faster and faster and faster until it collapses into a black hole. And the black hole keeps on spinning, inconceivably fast. Some of them spin millions of times a second. Why spinning black holes are special? Just like non-spinning black holes, spinning black holes... Anything to do with math and physics of these things, infinite density, infinite mass, absurdly high angular momentum that figures out to 90% the speed of light, they're just fascinating. ...have an event horizon and a singularity at their core where all of their mass is concentrated. The singularity is usually described as a single, infinitely small point with no surface area. But points can't rotate, so a rotating singularity can't be a point. Instead, it's a ringularity. A ringularity is a <laughs> ring with a thickness of zero and no That's surface, awesome spinning extremely fast, containing all the mass of the black hole. The black hole is spinning so fast that it morphs space and time itself. It literally drags space with it, such as its power. This creates a new and super weird region of space-time, the ergosphere, which envelops the black hole. If space and time are completely broken inside the event horizon, then they're only half broken inside the ergosphere. Inside the ergosphere, nothing makes sense. It's possible to enter it and then leave it again, but it's probably not a great experience. You can imagine it like this. Falling into a static black hole is like sliding down a hole. Being inside the ergosphere of a spinning black hole is like spiraling down a deadly drain. The black hole transfers its own kinetic energy in the form of rotation to everything that enters the ergosphere. The ringularity makes you dance whether you want to or not. You need to move faster than the speed of light just to stand still here, which is impossible. But here's our cheat code. We can steal this energy. And there's a lot of energy to steal. How to steal energy from a monster. That's a cool concept. Yeah, just get energy from black holes. Amazingly abundant energy that makes nuclear fusion look like nothing. <laughs> Take the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. We could steal as much energy from it as every single star in the Milky Way emits in a billion years combined. 
The easiest way to steal this energy is, oddly enough, to drop something into the black hole. We've seen that the ringularity forces energy on us when we enter the ergosphere, which is a lot like being in a world. I can't get over the name ringularity. It's a dad joke and it's awesome. <laughs> with space time rushing around and around. If you're clever, you can use the water to your advantage and swim faster than before. In practice, this means sending a rocket into the ergosphere and making a trade with the black hole. We give it some mass energy, and it gives us some of its rotational energy. But it's not a fair trade. We get the better deal. Normally, if you fire a rocket, you exchange chemical energy for kinetic energy. This is like pushing yourself forward in a swimming pool. But if you fire a rocket inside the ergosphere, it's like pushing yourself forward in a wave pool. The rotational energy of the waves gives you a much stronger boost than you could get just by pushing yourself. The boost from the rotation of the black hole is so big that you leave the ergosphere with much more energy than you entered it. The black hole gives a tiny amount of its rotational energy to you and slows down a little. Obviously, this requires a lot. Kind of makes sense. It's like when you give yourself a boost, when you have your buddy spin you really, really fast on a merry-go-round and then you jump off. It's sort of a, it's sort of the same thing, right? The food. Fortunately, black holes aren't picky eaters. An advanced future civilization would probably harvest asteroids to drop them into the black hole when they needed an energy boost. But there's an even better way to get energy from a black hole, and oddly enough, it builds the biggest bomb any living thing could ever hope to build. The black hole bomb. We only need two things to build a black hole bomb, a fast spinning black hole and a big mirror. The mirror has to completely envelop the black hole, which is similar to a Dyson sphere, a mega structure that harvests the energy of an entire star. Although our mirror would be easier to build, mirrors are simpler and black holes are much, much more compact than stars. True. If we made the mirror 10 centimeters thick, the metal of a big asteroid would probably be enough material for a black hole with the mass of our sun. Once our mirror is in place, we only need to open a window and shoot electromagnetic waves at the black hole. You can imagine what happens next by imagining tossing a ball at a wall and it coming back faster than a bullet. The waves hit the black hole at light speed. A small proportion of the waves falls past the event horizon to disappear forever but a much larger amount sloshes through the ergosphere where the black hole forces some of its rotational energy on them and amplifies them. They now begin super radiant scattering, which are fancy science words meaning bouncing around between mirror and black hole and getting stronger. Every time- Exponentially stronger and then, okay, I see where they're going with this. Around, they are getting exponentially stronger. By opening some windows in the mirror, we can extract the energy from the waves as fast as they grow, which we could use, in theory, to create what would be, for all practical purposes, an endless source of energy for trillions of years. Or we could blow it up. If the waves are not released, they will continue to get stronger and stronger and take more and more energy from the black hole until the mirror shatters. A supermassive black hole would release as much Knowing how we've done, let's see, we've actually developed nuclear weapons before we developed nuclear power. And as far as fusion is concerned, it's been weaponized since the 1950s and has yet to become a um, commercial, reliable energy source. So, given our history, I think we might go for the bomb first. <laughs> energy as a supernova, making the bomb the largest explosion any living being could ever create. The last home in a dying universe. The beauty of the black hole bomb, the Penrose process, and the super radiant scattering is that they are not science fiction. In the far, far future, this might be the only way to survive in our dying universe. After all the red dwarfs have cooled down and all the white dwarfs transformed into black dwarfs, the universe will turn dark forever. Rotating black holes might be the only sources of energy in the entire universe that life could harvest. If so, the last living being in existence might one day end its life around a black hole, which is equally chilling 
and uplifting. It turns out that even without any light, there are places we can go. Black holes are as interesting as they are mysterious, but there's actually... That's a cool concept, and it sounds like it's a lot more practical than even a uh, Dyson Sphere, Dyson Swarm, just because you, you can put a lot... You don't need nearly as much material. Yeah, if you don't want you don't want to get sucked into it and you know, it's a lot you have to go a lot further away from just our solar system in order to find a black hole that's a suitable candidate to do that, but it's a it's a fascinating idea. I I really like the idea of using that super high gravitational energy. You can imagine what we could be capable of with that. What do you think about it? Do you think um it's Better than a Dyson Sphere, comparable. Um, you should have both. I'm all, I'm all for having more sources anyway of energy. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.